Hello! In today's video I want to talk about our endless obsession with nostalgia. I want to talk about this because I am a very nostalgic person myself and I think that many people from my generation and even many older people are still very obsessed with the things that they have done or experienced or seen in their youth and I want to talk about why this is a phenomenon that everyone of all ages experiences and why it's such a good thing and such a fun thing. So most of the times when we think of nostalgia we think of things that happened in our childhood. Things like TV series, games, books, music, that sort of thing. But usually nostalgia happens in every single age but we just don't call it nostalgia. For example, you can have nostalgia for something that happened three years ago when you were an adult. But mostly in the Western world, nostalgia is focused on times of childhood. And this probably has to do with the fact that most of the things that happen in childhood are pure and without judgment. If you like something, you can like it a lot and be okay with it and not be ashamed about it. You can watch hours and hours of the Pokemon series on TV and no one will judge you. Also it's a thing that shapes you. It's a thing that you memorize because it was special to you. Enjoying something that wasn't always there. At least for me, watching TV was something that I was not allowed to do most days and so when Pokemon was on TV it was a special thing and now I've got nostalgia about those times. Most of the things that we experience as nostalgia in childhood also are because there is no judgment about it. Nowadays we as adults sometimes get judged whenever we really really like something. Like you can be heavily obsessed with something and feel ashamed about it. Let's for example take cosplayers. Cosplayers often take their um, inspiration from childhood action figures or series that they've seen on TV and they really want to portray those characters in real life when they're adults. However, many many people shame cosplayers for that same reason. You shouldn't be so obsessed with something that happened in your childhood and is still something that you love right now because apparently adults aren't allowed to be heavily obsessed with things and even new things. Um, that have to do with media are often judged. So let's for example take people who are a really big fan of Dungeons and Dragons. Maybe they haven't played it in their childhood and are playing it now. Oftentimes those people are judged because they really get into the game. And it's almost as if you're not allowed to have a passion for something that might be a little bit controversial when you're an adult. As adults we're supposed to like normal stuff, we're supposed to like reading books or, or we're supposed to like going cycling every weekend. But we're not allowed to like the things that are slightly different because even if you're a little bit more in love with those things and other people are, you're often considered to be a bit extreme. And that is why nostalgia is an easy thing to fall back on. It's something that you can explain to other people because it was already there when you were growing up. And that also means that more people can relate to what you're going through. I don't think that nostalgia has to do with that the past was better. Maybe this is the case in times of the pandemic. But usually, nostalgia does not really have to do much with the times being better in previous years. It's more so of a hearkening for things that you want to experience again but can't. For example, being a child and being in front of the TV, careless and just eating some ice cream. That is the things that we long for and now we can't do those things anymore because our innocence is gone. And sometimes we have so much to worry about because basically we have a whole life to live. And so 
it isn't about times being better, it's just about times being different. We can even, just as I said in the beginning of this video, have nostalgia about things that happened very recently, like for example three years ago. And usually that is just the case with most of the things being enjoyable. If something is enjoyable, we will remember it and we will harken back to those times and be glad while thinking about it. Nostalgia is almost a way of being reminded of good times, but not necessarily that the past was always better. Now is probably also good, but we just don't yet have those memories. One thing that we should also take into consideration is that the media that we consume as a child shapes us for the rest of our lives. Don't take this too seriously because you can obviously change but the things that I have grown up as a child with, I still really uh, feel like it has influence on me now. I didn't grow up with rap music, for example, and I still don't listen to rap music. However, I grew up listening to Lord of the Dance and River Dance, which is Irish music, and I still really like those kind of music. So whatever your parents or you yourself as a child get involved with is something that will stay with you for the rest of your life. And so it does really have an influence on you that the things that you consume, the media that you consume when you are a child will follow you for the rest of your life. Now we come to the part of nostalgia and the pandemic that we're currently in. If you have noticed yourself, you've probably been getting really nostalgic about the times before the pandemic. This is for a few reasons, but one of the fun things that I found out in the research for this video is that some sales of products that we grew up with are doing really well. For example, let's take Lego. Lego has had a 14% increase of their sales in the first half of 2020. It is coming from a sense of nostalgia. What we basically had was a lot of free time. And how are you going to fill it? with things that you already loved and already knew and that was buying Legos and playing with Lego and I totally understand because we've been through it all and it was it is a good toy basically it was a means of escape for adults to again play with something that they already knew but also bringing new life into it because as adults you look at those things with a totally new perspective especially if you do it for your own sake and not for the child's sake if you maybe have a child. Another interesting thing is that we saw a rise of older music being listened to during the pandemic. For example, artists like Queen and David Bowie and also Toto were listened to a lot more in 2020 than in 2019 because we harken back to the times of better times, basically. We don't want to remind ourselves of music being made in the pandemic because it's reminding us of the pandemic. And it's also fun to see that we still enjoy those kinds of older music, but we had to have a trigger to listen to it again. Someone who's playing into our nostalgia during this time very well is Taylor Swift. She's about to release her re-recording of her album Fearless. And this is the perfect time for an artist like her to release an album like this, which she had released first in 2008. Taylor Swift has done this thing where it's very um, beneficial to release an album like this in pandemic times because we want to experience that feeling of nostalgia and we want to feel like those little fangirls again who were listening to her when we were just teens and now we've grown up and still listen to her music. And these were just a few examples of people who are really playing into our uh, desires to basically be in touch with our previous selves again. So this was my little video about nostalgia. I hope that you uh, can discuss with me in the comments about how do you experience nostalgia? Do you still experience it? And do you also have nostalgia about things from only like two or three years ago? I would like to hear your opinions and I will hope to see you in the next video. Bye!